Everything in the universe is impermanent and passes away. Even the stars eventually burn out and turn into cold embers floating in space. But we human beings have always longed for permanence. We build cathedrals to last for centuries, and we believe that at least the heavens were permanent. The person who dispelled that belief was the Italian mathematician and physicist Galileo Galilei. I'm in Florence, Italy, where he lived most of his life. Galileo was considered the first modern scientist. He started by experimenting with everyday objects, rolling balls down slopes and observing pendulums. And around the year 1600, he discovered the law for the motion of pendulums. The same timeless law that I verified myself as a boy four centuries later. But what really brought me to Florence was Galileo's revolutionary work with the telescope. The 16th and 17th centuries were a time of new ideas about light, perspective, and the appearance of things. Painters were experimenting with converging lines in their pictures of the world, showing how perspective could arrange things in space. Scientists measured the speed of light. The telescope was the jewel of these discoveries. Crude spyglasses had been invented in Holland, but used only for military work. Galileo realized that by varying the placement of lenses and the length of the tube, he could improve the design and make things appear much closer than they would to the naked eye. I wanted to see Galileo's original instruments preserved in this museum. The ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle thought that the earth was the center of the universe and that the moon, the sun, and the stars sat on surrounding spheres. According to Aristotle, the heavenly bodies were all made of some immortal, perfect, indestructible stuff, which he called the ether. The moon was a pure white sphere in the sky. There they are, the only two surviving telescopes made by Galileo himself. He was one of the very first people to point a telescope at the sky. It amazes me how simple Galileo's first telescopes were. Pretty much just a tube with two lenses. But with these simple instruments, Galileo saw craters on the moon and spots on the sun. He forever changed our conception of the heavens and our understanding of where we humans fit in the universe. Galileo first published his observations in Sidereus Nucius, which means the starry messenger. Paolo, I've been told that this, that this is an exact replica of Galileo's telescope. It, it is a beautiful it's object. It's a beautiful object. If I look out of this telescope, the, the field of view or the, the, the amount that I can see is very small. It's like holding a dime at arm's length. Yeah. Was that a problem for Galileo? It was a big problem because you can imagine, you see on the Sidereus Nuncius this drawing of the full moon, but he couldn't ever see through the lenses of the telescope the full moon. He could see one third of the moon at a time. So can you imagine the mechanics of drawing these pictures? I mean, you had to look at, try to memorize what he saw, go to the piece of paper and, and trying to, to create in a disc one third. And then he go back again and try to focus on the second third and going back. So such a terribly difficult thing. Why do you think that the starry messenger, the Sidereus Nucius, today is not given the same uh, respect as, say, Darwin's Origin of the Species sure. or uh, Newton's Principia? The Sidereus has a different organization. It's just a kind of uh, report of experiments. 
Moreover, uh, the Sidereus Nuncius has been written in less than two weeks. <laughs> And uh, we are scholars and we know that writing a book in two weeks is quite a challenge, especially a crucial book <laughs> like this one. And this was, of course, under the pressure of the fear of being anticipated by others and might have discovered the same things or more things than he could. So it had to be as fast as possible in spreading the news Nunchos means news, <laughs> mm -hmm. spreading the news, and, and so he wrote, wrote as quick as possible. It sounds like Google and Apple rushing new products to market. New products, uh, breaking news. <laughs> are, are there any uh, signs when you look at the book that, that oh, was written? Many quickly? signs, Alan. So you see that while he was going to the printer to check the proofs, the galleys of this book, he was still at night looking at the stars and he was discovering new details, but the book was already printed. So if you go to page 18, after page 18, you see these two pages. No, no page numbers. No page numbers. What means this? Uh, and the page numbering starts again after these four pages following the earlier one, which means that it has been added. So this, this is a, quite a mess, this book. Maybe quite a mess in pagination, but quite revolutionary nevertheless, no? Well, the Siderius Duncius is, is, uh, is a milestone in, in, nobody can discuss that. I mean, 1610 is a, is a milestone in the history of the development of human understanding of nature. Why do you think that Galileo's discovery was so revolutionary? Well, it was changing something that uh, for, for millennia were believed out of dispute. And imagine that the, the moon was totally different from what poets, uh, scientists, uh, uh, literary men had described before, was something that was really breaking news. Nobody would have ever arrived at imagining that there were valleys and there were mountains on mm -hmm. the moon. I imagine the first readers of the Siderius were struck much more from the few images than by the descriptions that he was giving or what he observed. But after Galileo, the heavens were no longer heavenly. Galileo realized that the moon and sun are not perfect bodies. The immortal ether didn't exist. Everything in the cosmos is made of the same stuff, and everything passes away. I wanted to see what Florence would look like through the replica telescope from high up on San Maniato. Galileo's story had me thinking about permanence and impermanence. Why do we human beings long so for permanence against all the evidence presented to us by nature? What's the point, I ask myself, of something that's here today and gone tomorrow, like a meal or a letter or a pair of shoes or a human life, a flicker in the vast hallways of time? I think we associate permanence with meaning. We also associate permanence with divinity and perfection. But isn't perfection a manufactured idea? Nothing we see around us is perfect. Maybe the moment is all there is. Maybe I should be content with the moment. In my opinion, one of the most important implications of Galileo's work was the realization that heaven and earth are made out of the same material. But Galileo could have known that everything is made out of the same atoms forged at the centers of stars. That conclusion would have to wait three and a half centuries for modern physics and astronomy. <laughs>